Welcome to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast, where world-changing spiritual entrepreneurs come to deeply awaken the power within to bring forth their greatest purpose, to create massive awakened impact for millions of souls around the planet, while enjoying being in tune with all life and real wealth in all aspects of their lives. I'm your host, Daniel John Hanneman. Welcome everybody to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. I'm so grateful to be with you again. Today we're going to be talking about, again, rocking your sales and particularly around exploring and shifting your consciousness so that you can rock your sales. So what needs to happen there? All right, so let's uh, just dive right into it today. So the number one thing really I feel in our consciousness that holds us back is, is really the whole idea of where we're trying to make something happen and that we are not as powerful as we really are in being able to have what it is that we want to help other people and then therefore allow them to invest and do the money thing and all that and let, let it all be well. So so we give our power away to so many things. And one of them is just realizing that we are infinite power is missing often for most people doing this work in the world. You spiritual teachers, leaders, energy healers, you know, most of my audience are, are healers, light leaders, people like that. So that's one of the number one things. It's one of those things you're not going to hear all the time is one of those blocks that people have in their consciousness when it comes to rocking their sales. You are infinite power. You are capable of onboarding your own consciousness into whatever you want to onboard it into, but you have to be willing to. So is that absolutely true? Could you onboard yourself to any idea? Theoretically, absolutely a million percent. And often in reality, 1 million percent. <laughs> okay. People are going to give, try to give me, you know, different ideas. Well, I can't, I can't just to enroll somebody at $10 billion overnight. Okay. But anything you truly want to on board, yeah, and I would even argue against that. I could have a whole big argument. We're not going to waste time with that today because I don't think that's needed to go that far. But the truth is, is you could, if you really desired it enough, you could make any sale. You could make any deal happen. Often, you know, one of the things that uh, light leaders and healers suffer from is that because they have such a heart to just want to serve, that they're just an idea of, I want to help people. I want to help people. I just want to be seen as the good good girl, the good guy, or the good healer, or whatever. And I want people to think of them after their money. I don't want people to think of that. I don't want people to think of that. And often that be, can be a big issue. Or, yeah, I mean, I, for especially people that haven't seen a bigger breakthrough, that aren't maybe even at like 50 grand a year in their business or whatever. Um, or even people who are, you know, people are at lower levels or even in the, are the higher and higher levels, multi six figures, et cetera. So often people have this thought, like I got a people please, where we start to see a drop off often is in the seven figure land, but you know, people are not at that level. Often they still are suffering various levels of I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about this money thing and uh, people investing. And so can I trust it? Can I feel I'm an in integrity? Even no matter how good my work is, what if one person has an issue? Okay, I have a refund policy. Okay, I'll give them their money back. But a lot of people don't feel good about that. And you, you know, most of us can't guarantee results. Some people say they can and they do, and they 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 never have to pay refunds because the work is so good. That's great. If you're that person, dial me up. I want to promote you. I want to learn more about you. I want to get behind you one million percent. Uh, I just don't think it's probably entirely true for most people that that's even true. So for the vast majority of people, I don't think they all, you know, most people would say, well, if that's not true, then your work sucks. And then I don't believe that either. So, but depending on what kind of work you're doing, but usually when you're doing various transformational work and trying to help people towards a certain result, we can get hard on ourselves. We can get hard on our clients, some of us too, and get frustrated and feel like, uh, I have to, you better get that result because you invest a lot of money and now I'm going to feel bad if you don't get, <laughs> don't get that result. So these are the sort of blocks that we run into. 
But when we realize like we're infinite beings and we're all just finding our way and that there is no investment that cannot be wasted, nothing can be wasted. Like just this idea of waste is really, again, on an absolute level is completely nonsense. Nothing is ever wasted. We, we're arrogant enough to think we're separate from the nature of life, right? We have an ego. So we're like, we're, we're not like nature. We're, we're, we're crazy. We're different. We're not like nature, but uh, you're more like everything in nature than you realize, right? So there's fire, there's lava, there's, you know, all kinds of disruptive forces in the universe, but a lot of times we're not paying attention to that. We're paying attention. Oh, it's so beautiful out and all these nice things are happening. Well, you're walking by like maybe one microbe, you know, eating another one, like, like in the billions all around you or something like, I don't, okay, scientifically, I don't even know if that's true, but I'm saying things like that are probably happening. Like things are being created and destroyed nonstop. And so when we see ourselves doing it, we're like, oh, that's our ego. That doesn't happen in nature. It happens all the time. So there's a lot of nonsense. This is why I say exploring your consciousness. The idea of do no harm is really big with concerns around environment, climate change, whatever the latest buzzwords is for, but concern about the environment, the, the way we're caring for the planet, you know, come up. And therefore, capitalism, I mean, capitalism is wrong, maybe paying taxes where government is wrong, they're just going to create nukes and keep, you know, wars going that shouldn't be happening. So uh, what we need to do is learn to clear all these, you know, programs that could limit us in terms of rocking ourselves, like exploring our consciousness. What are we thinking? And I'll get more into the collective thought forms even more so uh, in our next round. But right now, just even, even now, like with some of those things, I remember when I didn't want to pay taxes, for example, it was a subconscious program. It's not like, and conscious. So that was actually conscious, that one as well. And eventually I just had to say, I'm just trusting, even if it's a small portion of those tax dollars, it actually is doing a really good service for people in the world. And in this country, in this case, or in the world, I got to get behind that and hope that it keeps increasing and things get better right? and, and pray for that. You know, I, you know, I have to have that sort of attitude at least. And so that's what I did. And then once I've cleared that, then I started making more money. Right. So there's different, different beliefs I've had and that I see clients have that keep them stuck until we clear that belief. They can't seem to receive more money. Do you want to meditate and make money? Let it be simple. Let it be easy. Let it be fun. Go to yoursacredpurpose.com and get your free meditate, make money meditation today. So, you know, there's so many different ones. We could do a huge long show on it. Maybe I will do one of those one of these days, all the different beliefs. I could write a whole book, multiple books, lots of books on all the different permutations of beliefs. But the ultimately, you have to notice what is it that's stopping you? You know, we just break it down to what is stopping you. Is it concepts around money is the concepts around what's going to happen once you start making more money is the concepts around you as a salesperson is it you know i'm selling oh my god i shouldn't be too enrolling or uh i don't want to enroll at all i just want that source to line it all up and let it happen if it's meant to happen for the highest whatever these concepts are we have to dismantle any nonsense so that we can just be who we are show up fully as who we are and shift into the consciousness that would allow ourselves to rock our sales, period. You know, brings us into our power. It's like, it's your sales power. It's your rock your sales power program, all right? Maybe I'll launch one of those suckers soon, right? Rock, rock your sales power program. And when you're in your sales power, everything's possible. I see it with my clients. I just got another message today from a client who says, just signed up another client to, you know, his program and he's consistently enrolling people now, whereas it was a little bit more very inconsistent in the past because he's in his sales power consistently. You could say strategies, it's this, it's that, it's the other thing. All those things are true, but if he didn't have a sales power turned on, it wouldn't be happening. So he had to shift his consciousness from you know, I'm just not feeling it. I'm not in the mood to like, okay, I, I want to be in the mood. I am interested, right? 
and getting into it and utilizing the abilities he has to enroll people. And then, you know, he does provide amazing service and transformation for people and then bringing them into it. But it, it, you have to get through those limiting beliefs. What are they for you? Could something attack me? You know, healers often have like persecution concerns, people pleasing. Am I pleasing? Are, are people going to like me if I charge too much? Maybe I'm not the nice person. Now I'm just this horrible person that wants your money and uh, charging you way more than other people might charge you for a similar service. Yeah, that all that doesn't matter. That's all mental noise and and and, and concepts. It's just all conceptual land. You're going to have a concept. It may as well be a positive one. Is one of my you know sayings. Is if you're going to think, you may as well think positive. Often, it, it, what we want to be doing is stop the thinking, get tuned in, discover what your truth is, what lights you up. A scale of one to ten, what would you prefer to do? Okay, the scales of one to ten can be extremely effective in getting to your truth, to what you really want. And then you you have to honor your desire. Your desire is instructions from source is my belief okay it's my belief now you could say like well how much on scale one to ten do you want to eat cake is a 10 okay that's source talking to me maybe it is a scale of one to ten how much cake do you actually want to eat you know um a whole cake uh, it's a 10 no uh, a, a single slice a bit a nice hearty slice with a lot of frosting on nope not getting a 10 on that either right um, I, I like, I like, I don't know. I just want to eat as much cake as I want. Is that a 10? Uh, nine, maybe. Uh, okay. Whatever it might be in the moment. All right. That's closer to truth. You know, where's my 10? Where's my 10? You know, usually people come to false conclusions because they don't think things through it enough or they don't tune into it enough. Or yeah, the simplest way is just to be completely attuned. Right. But two people, too many people are in their mind. So you can use the mind, you may as well use questioning questions to shift your consciousness, ex explore where you are, find out your truth, be completely honest with yourself, and then live your truth like I was talking about in part one of all this. You've got to get to your truth and then live in that truth into that radiance. So for cake, maybe your truth is the highest level of awesomeness for you is, I'm just going to eat as much cake as I want, whenever I want. I'm a 10 on that, Okay. There's no restrictions. There's no pre-programmed ideas. It's just, uh, do I want it or I don't want it in a particular moment when I'm in my power, when I'm in my strength, not when I'm, you know, like, oh, I'm not having a good day. I think I have a whole cake or something. So same thing with, again, sales. Okay, am I in the mood to do sales today and, and, and do the activities that generate leads, et cetera? Scale one to 10, where am I? No, I'm a zero. Okay. A scale of one to 10, where are you on having fun today? 10, right? Almost everybody's going to be a 10 there. Okay. All right. A scale of one to 10, how would it be fun to market my business today? Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. Social media post, uh, zero. I don't want to do that. Okay. Uh, Facebook Live, uh, five. Okay. Five. All right. Instagram reel. Oh, okay. Maybe a six. All right. Okay. Maybe I'll set up, maybe I'll actually do some networking today. Oh my God. That's a 10. All right. Now that doesn't sound like marketing your business, but if you get in front of people, you talk to them about what you do, it could lead to sales, right? And so many other things And you could ask more questions about what, yeah, scale one to 10, all the things you can do with that network meeting. What would be a 10? You get all your tens lined up, explore your consciousness, and you could shift your, rather than just clearing blocks, like where's your 10, where's your truth? Sort of going back to program number one, uh, again, about finding your truth. So shift through it, you know, ask high quality questions. This is, this is again, these aren't all original teachings, but you have to ask high quality questions of your consciousness. Discover if you're feeling fear or contraction, how you're asking low quality questions. It's fearful, it's a great fear, the question itself. How am I going to survive today? Oh my God, <laughs> how am I going to possibly find any clients? Okay, that's going to bring contraction and fear. But if you're saying, okay, how many new opportunities do I get to show up and talk about my business today? How many, you know, how many, you know, how much fun am I going to have doing this today? How many, you know, like asking questions that are empowering and really light you up rather than to bring you down. 
you know, realizing again, sales is a service. Sales is a service. Okay. Yes. It could be used to manipulate. Yes. It could be used to just take someone's money and lie to them and bring them into something that, you know, it might help them or might not, but you didn't care. All you cared about is making your pitch for them to be in it and taking their money. Okay. So no, you know, that that's not service, but you know, those of you that are heart center, just look at sales as service. Look at sales as service. Trust yourself. Trust yourself. You, most of you, if you try to be as persuasive as possible, you'll probably be about right. You know, that's what I found in my career is when I was willing to be more persuasive, then, you know, that was about right, which, you know, depends on where I'm at. Like when I'm in a roll that mode to bring more people into something, I get more and more enrolling. Um, because maybe it's not as a selective program, but yeah, high level and higher level, you know, clientele that I may bring in, I get more selective. So I may not be as persuasive unless I really know that person is meant to work with me. So sales is, there's so many of these basic ideas about sales. So they're all great, but again, we have to look at the nuance as well of sales, like okay, where's my consciousness need to be for the kind of sales that I want to do? You know, am I being more exclusive? Am I wanting to work with as many, you know, uh, of a certain type of people as possible? Every single person that has been crushed by, you know, a divorce and it feels, you know, like just horrible about themselves and blames themselves. I want every single person to get my service. Okay, great. Let's see what we can create that will serve them best, as many as possible, right? Then we would work that out. And then you would need to be very, like, talking probably again and again and being very enrolling. So this is where when people are working with me, you know, as a guide and intuitive business coach or whatever label you want to give it to, to help you to rock your sales, I'm downloading, tuning into you, and we're fleshing out, like, exactly, like, how it's going to create your alignment what's going to create your alignment so you rock yourself so yeah so just you know uh, this idea of just thinking positive well that has can be it is helpful i think you go to extremes oh positive thinking doesn't work it absolutely works now if all you do is think positive and you just tend to you know not really take new actions may not matter right uh, if you only have positive thoughts you never address like core beliefs and clear those core beliefs you're just putting, you know, nice stuff over a bunch of crap, right? So and it'll still make a difference, but it won't be as productive as dealing with the core stuff as well. So again, here at Spiritual Rise Star Podcast, we're all about trying to speak as much of the full truth as possible rather than just nice little bullet points, just do these three-step process only, and they're all good. I tend not to do that here anyway. We want to get to deeper truth. There may be some of that. Actually, one of these uh, segments actually probably will have a little bit of that, but I always I try to bring nuance, you know, a little bit of nuance into the conversation because like one of my first teachers when I was getting into doing counseling, you know, said this and I never forget it. I says, well, what's the truth about this or that? And you know, every time I go to her with a question like that, she would say, it depends depends it's just one of the wisest things i've ever heard somebody say i mean it's so basic but it's so true it depends it depends right so but one thing that i do know is that unless you shift your consciousness i'm going to continue to have the same sales results in one way or another you have to shift your consciousness now i get it some people and i am i'm a, a a presence guy and all that stuff too so people say well no it's not about changing anything it's just about Finally, letting uh, letting yourself be who you are and be in the fullness of who you are and let it all happen. But there's so much spyware. There's so much crap going on in your consciousness. Unless you're extraordinarily awakened and extraordinarily committed to your purpose and your service, which is totally possible. But for most of us, we're just not there yet, um, so to speak. We're just not in that state yet. We have to keep clearing and clearing and working on our consciousness. And even those that are at those heightened states need to do that sort of work in their own way. So anyway, so I hope that this was a value to you. This is just to help give you some ideas of things to, to, to do to explore your consciousness. How do you do it? When you're noticing you're stuck in a certain area of doing sales or financially a certain income or sales level, just ask yourself, 
okay, write down like all the different thoughts you think you're having or consciousness you're holding on to that's sticking you. Like tune into it, just channel it, and you'll you'll find things. You'll find the things. You'll find find the number one thing in there. Once you clear the number one thing, like I'm ten out of ten that this is the thing that's probably stopping you the most. Then again, that would be the thing to clear for sure. And then uh, you know. I don't believe you have to clear every last little belief all the time. Otherwise, you never get there and all that nonsense. But there's certain key sticking points that we are going to have that need to be addressed or there's not more receptivity to allow more to happen. You might believe you have too many clients already. You're too busy to take on more people. Then how do you think you're going to increase yourself? Probably more your mindset and how you're approaching doing that work with the clients and your actual client load and for most of you and some of you need to just charge more and have less clients so anyway so there's so many places where i could get into uh but for today i'm going to leave it there if you want to learn more and have me tune in to help uh, examine your consciousness and support you with all this just go to yoursacredpurpose.com get a rock your sacred purpose you know energy scan consultation that's what what i'm calling it right now on the website anyway I'll examine all your your thoughts on that, et cetera. You know, or you know, rock your sales energy energy session with me. So whatever you know, whatever you choose, you can't lose. I actually do some clearing during that session and also examine your consciousness and also strategically start laying out the plan, you know, fairly quickly, depending on where you're at. So I specialize in helping those of you that are healer types, your leader types, strong types, high achiever types, typically they're already doing, you know, pretty well, like probably even six figures or above many of you and helping you to really, you know, master your sales and increase those sales so that you can become a seven figure, you know, business ultimately, but first maybe get you to multi six figures if you're not there, you know, and so on and so forth. So or if you're mid six figures to take you to seven figures, all that good stuff. Um, but doing it in a state of being that's uh, very spiritually deepening and connected. All right, guys, let's make the biggest impact possible by continuing to deepen and do all the things we know to do. It helps us to rock our sales so we can help people in the first place and to make the impact and to enjoy the abundance that we are uh, fully in the world. You know, what is money? It's a bunch of it's a concept, right? So we're just saying yes to the concept. We're having faith in the concept. The U.S. dollar says in God we trust. So can you just trust in this concept of money? You know, knowing it's just something we've invented as a way of exchange, and to just just trust it and trust the abundance. Let's let it happen. Okay, guys, uh, I'm so grateful to have shared with you today. Keep tuning into this series and to all the interviews we do here and whatnot. I'm, I know you're going to love them. Okay, so keep on tuning in, as I always say, and we'll keep on rocking to here at Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Till the next time. The Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Stay tuned for our next upcoming new episodes each Wednesday and Saturday. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review to help us to serve you best. As a reminder, you can get your free Meditate and Make Money meditation at www.yoursacredpurpose.com to rock your sacred purpose. Goodbye for now, everybody.